Okay, so what I'm looking at today is using an external recorder to capture gameplay. Why on earth you'd want to do that? Well, there are obvious reasons really. CPU load uh, reduction for one, but the type of recorder I'm using is the Shogun. So this is a kind of professional video. Uh, so this, this piece of kit is kind of two grand and it records in sort of 10-bit codecs and some ProRes and Avid um, DNX HD and things uh, up to 4K 60p. Yeah, we know about the Shogun. If you've watched this channel before, you definitely know about this particular device. But I've never tried recording gameplay from it. So I've recently just hooked it up to the computer. And I just want to explain the setup first. So this is the uh, main monitor. This is the 4K DCI monitor which is uh, 4096 by 2160, just, just slightly slightly wider than standard UHD, so it's, slightly, so it's a true 4K monitor. And this device has a native display of uh, full HD. It's, this one, however, is an HDR display, and Windows does pick that up, and I'll come back onto that in a second. So the setup's pretty straightforward. This is just coming out. You can, oh, you probably won't be able to see that, no, but uh, it's just coming out the back of my sound card, um, out the back of my video card, rather and uh, I've got the display port going to the main monitor and HDMI coming out into this. So right now the setup is extended. So this monitor here is extended on and then this one is just an extension of that. It's, they're not duplicated uh, because if they were duplicated this would be the same resolution and that would push, that would try and push 4K 60p down this cable which I don't think it's going to be terribly happy about. But I think what I'm going to have to do to capture gameplay is probably set this to 1080p. So I'm probably going to have to just set this main monitor to full HD and then just duplicate the two displays. I'm not quite sure yet how that's going to work. So as I mentioned, yeah, the massive benefit of recording on a device like this is it's a completely dedicated recorder with its own CPU, it's everything is on board, of course. And there, these things exist for game capture anyway. You know, I'm sure a lot of people who are serious about game capture would use something probably more, more specific and more um, sort of bespoke for game capture than something that's designed for filming. But the great thing about this is the codecs it uses are wonderful quality. They're great to edit with, and the color is maintained so accurately. The one thing I always notice when I'm just doing standard screen capture on something like uh, something that can do games well, so I'm not talking about Camtasia or something which does uh, tutorials well, I'm talking about game capture, so hooking into DirectX. If I use something like um, XSplit uh, or um, OBS or Bandicam or something, you generally end up recording to, uh, to an MP4, uh, so H.264 codec. And you get muddy sort of colors. You get, you get a loss of detail unless you're really pushing massive bit rates. And even then, the colors compared to the codecs that will come out, the codecs on this, the ProRes codec on this will, the codecs, the colors honestly look, just look so much better out of this. Uh, and then you've also got the benefit that this is, it's made for the job. It's a tool just to do that job. It just sits there and it will record. If it says it can record for four hours 34, it will just do it. There is no messing around. The only problem we have is setting this up correctly. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to do all of this the uh, what I would call the Julian Eilert way of. Uh, well, he used to always just film his to do screen stuff. He always used to just film it, and I always found that to be quite a nice way of working. Uh, so I'm going to do it all that way. And what you'll see uh, initially in here, if I switch to the Shogun, you notice that these HDR options here become un they become, uh, well, they're grayed out on my main monitor because although this one, this LG monitor is a 10-bit monitor, it's not an HDR monitor. Different thing, remember. This is simply not capable of creating the levels of gamma and the difference between blacks and whites uh, because it's just a standard um, IPS display. So it just can't do it. Whereas the Shogun Inferno is, the display on that is an HDR display. And it picks that up. So as soon as I select number two, I can enable HDR if I want, and I can output 10-bit color in a kind of, um, well, what looks like a kind of log format into here, which is fine as long as you're always going to display it on a 10-bit, uh, on, um, on, a, on a HDR display. But I'm not in this case, so I'm not, not going to work with it in that way. 
So it's the NVIDIA control panel that I've found so far to give us the by far the best control of doing anything on this. I've, uh, I tried making setting changes through Windows and it just really messed things up. It became unreliable, unstable, and just didn't work very well. In the uh, in NVIDIA stuff here, we can see that the Shogun Inferno is actually identified via the HDMI cable. And this is my LG here for 4096-2160 at 60 hertz. And then my Shogun here says its native, native resolution is 1080p 1920 by 1080 at 60 hertz. But, you know, I can make changes to this. There are a bunch of resolutions on here, some of which are just quite clearly not supported by the Shogun. So, you know, you can't do 2560 by 1440 on the Shogun. But at least as far as I know, I don't think it will support that. Uh, so there are some on here that just aren't supported. But most of these standard you know, full HD, 720p, 4K, they will work just fine. So if I select, for example, if I leave it on full HD and I select 120 hertz rather than 60 hertz and apply that, now my main monitor stays the same, but if I go back to my Shogun, you can see that the resolution there, if it will, if it will focus on that for me, is it going to focus there? It's just focusing on my camera reflection. Ah, there we go. Yes, you can see that the this uh, will happily support recording at 1080p 120 frames a second. So if you wanted to, you could, and you had a game that would support 120 frames a second. I mean, my, my 1080 Ti card will do, will do many games and maintain a pretty close to 120 most of the time, but it will comfortably do 60. So I think that's what I'll be working with in this example. So that's how we're going to sort of set this up here. What I can see is that I'm going to be setting this to... 60, but I'm probably going to have to uh, set up multiple displays. Yeah, I'll just change this back. Ah, oh, well, you learn something new every day, don't you? So it's apparently quite straightforward. You just uh, right click on this display and do clone with two. Brilliant. That's what I wanted to do. So now I have two, hopefully, if this will work. Is my main display going to come on again? Yes, good. Right. So yeah, now I now have full HD 1080, uh, sorry, full HD 60p display and a full HD 60p display, which you can see from the readout here. In some ways, I'd like to be able to treat these two monitors separately, but the reason I'm doing it this way as a duplicate, as a clone, is because I don't want to have to play the game on this device. It's just too small to play a game on. You know, I want to be able to play the game on the larger uh, monitor, not that I'm much of a gamer anyway. Uh, I don't know what game I'll choose, probably a bit of Sniper Elite or something like that, something I'm a little bit familiar with, if I'm going to record anything. Uh, first thing I need to do right now is uh, format the drive. So this has a one terabyte SSD in it, so I'll just uh, format, uh, format that, I'll do a secure erase. If you wonder what secure erase is, I think it just sends a massive bunch of, flattens the entire disk by just sending a massive bunch of like ones across the whole disk or something like that, across the whole memory. And that's all it does. It takes no time at all. And at HQ, which we don't need to do HQ, at 1080p 60 frames a second, we can, we can record 4 hours 34 minutes. If we go to the different uh, levels here, uh, 422, 6 hours 52, and at light, which is probably perfectly fine quality compared to the kind of quality you'd capture on H.264, 9 hours 51. A massive amount of time if you think this is going to be sat here recording. It's plugged in. It's just no, no, no bother at all. But of course, at this point, it's completely forgotten about audio. Now, right now, we have no audio coming into the device at all. If I go to the other monitor and uh, just show you this on this monitor, just because it's a little bit larger, and go to playback devices, what I'll have now in my playback devices is the Shogun Inferno, so I can output all of my audio from this PC down the HDMI cable straight into the Shogun. That seems a very sort of sensible way to do it, but of course it makes it difficult for me to hear it. So I'll have to monitor it out of the back, out of the Shogun, and I can potentially pipe that back into the sound card and get it out of my headphones, or I can just put headphones straight into the um, Shogun um, itself. 
So that seems sensible as far as game audio is concerned, but what about microphones? And what about if I want to sort of do some commentating on top of it? Well, there are options for that because on the side of the Shogun here, which I, if I just increase the brightness level, on the side of the Shogun here, you can see we've got this kind of um, Limo type style connector. It isn't one of those, but it's like that. And that allows a number of options around inputting audio into there. So I can get a microphone and I could put that straight in and then I could capture uh, I could capture HDMI on one track and my mic on another track and then I'd end up with a video file containing an audio WAV file with two tracks or four tracks, so two um, stereo tracks within it. All right, so this has, uh, this is now plugged in, a left channel, uh, so this is plugged into here which allows me two XL, two balanced XLRs out and this left channel is now just plugged into my Sennheiser um, MK8 microphone. This is the standard one that I use for most of my um, kind of screen capture and tutorial stuff. And I have to enable that in here now. So audio options and the mic uh, has to have 48 volts because it is a phantom powered mic. And I'm not getting any level on that at all at the moment. Why am I not getting anything through on that? Uh, let's go back to there and record which one of these ah there we go yeah so now we have that coming in on the left the left channel of this can i make that mono uh no i can't i can change the levels of it but i can't make it mono so i can't make it a double mono uh, from what i can see it doesn't matter really because i can do that later and I have to guess now that the music on the PC itself, so the music on here, I don't know why I keep sort of showing two different displays when they're actually showing the same thing, is coming through on here, which it is. Yeah, so we've now got mic audio coming in on this track. So I could probably turn that one off, don't need that. And the PC audio, which is just some music playing in the background there, coming in in stereo on this track. So that's kind of ready to go, really. Now I just have to fire up a game. So to, uh, to try and save cable mess, I've just uh, hooked the Inferno, the headphone out on the Inferno, into this uh, TR008 uh, headphone. Uh, Bluetooth transmitter and receiver set it to transmit and that's going to my Bluetooth headphones that will get we will get some latency as a result of that but it does appear to be working so I've set the audio up in here and my I'm monitoring my headphones now so this is the uh, HDMI track coming from the computer and that's the um, uh, the thingy track the microphone track and if we play some audio Should be able to hear that. Not my uh, usual style of music, I must admit, but that's working okay. So what I need to do now is pick a game. If I do want to see more of the game, I can just tap the screen like this and it clears the uh, display of everything else. But, um, but I want to see what the recorder's doing most of the time. Okay, good, that's working. It's coming through my headphones. You can see the levels on the game. Uh, something, another thing worth thinking about is the level of the mic versus the game. So I'm going to go into the game options themselves and turn the master volume down, but I'm going to have to just kind of guess at this really. I'm just going to put it halfway, which is peaking at about, oh, well, with the music, less than minus 12 dB, which compared to, um, compared to my mic, if I, if I go into the audio settings, and audio options and there you can see the mic is up well well sort of around minus six or so so hopefully the mic will be able to be heard above the gameplay so now what i'm going to do is just try and play something and record it right so i'll play the end result in a minute 
But uh, for now, let's just take a look at the actual output of the uh, the Atomos. And this is the file that's being created. It's a .mov file, standard ProRes extension, 11.7 .7 gig. And uh, let's look at some of the specs of this file. In uh, media, media info, ProRes 422HQ as set. 1920 by 1080, 60 frames, constant uh, 60 frames a second, so nice frames per second, really compatible with loads of video editing uh, software. Uh, the PCM audio, so the WAV file contained within this, contains four channels at 48K, 24 bits, so 4.6 meg of uh, megabits per second of audio. Pretty big, but it gives you the flexibility then to be able to adjust the levels. After I sort of mentioned before that I was worried about the mic level, it doesn't really matter, does it? Because they all come in as separate tracks anyway. Let's dump this into Premiere then. And drop it into a new sequence. Create a bit more space. And what you've got there is the video track, the mic track, the empty mic track, because of course the mic track was mono and the game, the two stereo game tracks at the bottom in uh, audio track three and four. So on this one, I need to modify this, I need to change my audio channels around, and uh, I want um, clip one to be channel one, but I also want clip two to be channel, uh, to channel one as well. I want that to be um, track one, sorry. So I just select that, and that immediately makes this a double mono track, which is nice and simple. So we've now got the mic in both these channels and the game there so we can flick through this and you can see you know, let me do set this to fit bring this down slightly you can see how simple it is to scrub through this, this is the best thing about it i mean this is coming straight off the uh, ssd uh, drive connected on the usb3 cable and it's just so simple to scrub through So the settings on this, pretty much everything's set to max. I mean, the game itself is not is not the best looking. I mean, it's not compared to... So you get an idea there. And that's it, really. That's how, well, one possible way, I suppose, of uh, capturing gameplay on a device. Really not designed for capturing gameplay, but it does a bloody good job of it if you can be bothered to set it up. So, yeah, capturing gameplay on, on an uh, Atomos Shogun Inferno, and let's take a look at the final result. Okay, so there we go. That should be recording. So it should be recording the mic in the left channel of one track and a stereo track of the game through the HDMI cable in the other track. And hopefully you'll be able to hear the mic on top of the game audio even though there's music playing at the moment. So I'm just going to load up something here. I don't know which one. I'll just do any old one of these. doesn't matter, really. I don't really want to um, ruin my where I'm up to. I've kind of forgotten the keys on this, too. I haven't played this for at least a couple of weeks. So the settings on this, pretty much everything's set to max. I mean, the game itself is not... It's not the best looking. I mean, it's not compared to some newer games. You know, it's compared to sort of Call of Duty and stuff. It's not the best looking game in the world, but it's pretty good. I mean, look at the light, the lighting on that there. Against his clothes and stuff does look pretty good. I'm always overcautious when I do this sort of stuff, I'm afraid. Oh gosh, the tank! Oh 
well that was a good start. 